And then they emailed me and they said, we don't really have a position for you. This was like a dream turned nightmare. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Love Liz Kelly, your virtual ticket to Japan. Today I'm gonna be talking about the JET program because I think it's actually coming up soon. Like you guys can literally like apply for it now. The JET program is a Japan exchange teaching program. So if you guys are interested in teaching in Japan, JET program is probably the one thing that you want to look at first among all the other programs because the JET program, it honestly, it pays the most. Um, it gets you to Japan for free. You learn a lot during your time there. I'm going to tell you a story about my experience in the JET program because it wasn't pretty. <laughs> If you guys don't know me, my name is Liz Kelly, and I live in Japan. I've lived here for five years, and this channel is all about life, health, and travel. I honestly, I can't escape Japan videos because this is my life. This is my life. I started out in the JET program, and that's why I'm here today to help you guys apply for it and be the best that you can be if you want to move to Japan. It's very, very hard to move to Japan when you don't want to teach. I suggest teaching for at least a year moving to Japan, and then if you want to search for something else, there are possibilities and ways to do that, but we are not going to discuss that today. We're going to talk about teaching. I'm not saying that the JET program is a bad program. The JET program is actually like one of the best programs. Um, some situations are worse than others. You can't really choose where you live, all sorts of things. So this is like the first video in my Moving to Japan series. If you're interested, I'm currently working on a guidebook on how to move to Japan and what you need, documents you need, um, reasons why you want to move here. Um, um, what to prepare, what to bring, all sorts of things. I'm working on that guidebook right now and it's going to be kind of like a video course to prep you to move to Japan because I wish I had that before I moved to Japan. If you guys want to know anything and you want me to put like a detailed description of something in this guidebook, please comment down below. I would love to know your questions so I can put those in the guidebook that's going to be coming out soon on my website lovelesskelly.com. When I was in college, I was studying Japanese and education. I wanted to be a Japanese teacher in the States, but jobs were very scarce once I graduated, so I decided I wanted to move to Japan to teach as an English teacher. When you apply for the JET program, you do not have to be a teacher. You just have to have, you don't have to have experience as a teacher, you just have to have a bachelor's degree. Most uh, ALT jobs, ALT as in like assistant language teacher, so those types of teachers are basically like language recorders. So most of the jobs in the JET program are just ALT positions. Some schools will that will allow you to teach like a full class and things like that. It just depends on your situation. Nobody has the same experience. That's all I'm gonna say. So going into this you have to be open-minded and you have to prepare for the worst. I applied for the JET program my last right before I graduated. I was very hopeful. I've been wanting to do this for so long. I've heard of so many stories. When I studied abroad in high school I met a couple ALTs that did the JET program and that's how I learned about it and then I always like aspired to do this program like all my life and so I was really excited to apply for it didn't apply for just one program I applied for JET program I applied for interact which is another company that's similar to the JET program it's all sorts of programs that you can apply for so I applied for all of them just in case I didn't get the JET program I applied for the JET program filled up a long ass application finished my essay I turned everything in I was ready to go I was excited to hear back and then eventually I got the interview and I was really really excited I was like oh my gosh I can't believe I made it to the interview interview was not as intense as the actual application like you would think that it would be more intense but when I entered the room the people that were there were pretty kind and nice and considerate but some of my uh, interview was in Japanese because if you put that you're you speak Japanese they'll ask you questions in Japanese you don't need to learn Japanese they just want to test that you know you're true to what you say. Went through the interview, I was pretty confident, and then I eventually got the job, and I was really excited. The worst part was getting all the documents you needed to move to Japan, especially the fingerprints. The fingerprints, I almost wasn't gonna be able to go to Japan because of those damn fingerprints. The police weren't doing them correctly, so I would turn in my fingerprints and they weren't, they weren't going through. Like, it just wasn't, 
calculating. I searched everywhere for different de police departments and things like that that would take me and do my fingerprints. It was the worst thing in the world. Eventually, it went through. I was okay to go, but it was just madness. Background checks, all sorts of things, health checks, shots, things like that. You need all this stuff in order to move to Japan. That was probably the most stressful part. The most tedious part was application. The interview part was the easiest, and the gathering the documents part was the most stressful. I moved to Aomori Prefecture, and Aomori Prefecture is very isolating. So let's back up a little bit. Um, when I got my placement, I was like, that sucks. <laughs> I heard very good things about Aomori, like there's beautiful festivals, beautiful things. It was a new experience for me because I've always spent my time in the Kansai region. It was in the very south of Japan, so going to the very north of Japan. But it was also very scary because of the, earth the earthquake had just happened like a year ago. And then they emailed me and they said, we don't really have a position for you. I was really confused. My position was to work in a BOE, which is a Board of Education office in Aomori. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Like I get to work in an office. Usually when you join the debt program, you have a predecessor. This is how you say it? I don't even know. You have somebody that's, the, the person that you're gonna take the place of is the person that's kind of your mentor before you move to Japan. She told me that she didn't teach very much. She would go to maybe one school like a month. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I picked the one girl that has an education background, that studied education, and they didn't have a school for her. I didn't have a placement at a school, like a specific school. She went to like seven different schools, and she would only go to these schools like every couple few months. So she wouldn't be able to connect with the students. She wouldn't be able to connect with the teachers. I wouldn't be able to do those things. So I was panicking and I was like, okay, so <laughs> what did they over recruit? And then they didn't know where to put me because my goal was to teach in Japan. Like I wanted a school. I wanted to teach. This is my dream. And the fact that I didn't really get that opportunity was very disappointing. They're like, if we'd understand if you didn't want to do the jet program, blah, 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 blah. And that was disheartening. So I said yes. And I said, you know, I, I'm going to be positive about this. I'm going to be open-minded. I'm going to go into this, have new experiences, meet new people. Um, so I was really hyping myself up. I was pumping myself up for this experience to happen. Like this is my dream and I'm going to be fine. and Everything's going to be okay. I was very positive about it. Then, when I got there, when I got to Aomori, I was given an apartment that was literally 9,000 yen a month, which is $90 a month. It was a very cheap apartment. The walls were not finished. Like, if you touch the walls, things would come off of them. It was really old. Aomori is very, very cold. I had a bathtub that if the winter got cold enough, it would freeze and I would have to take a pot of water and dump it on top of the bathtub to get it to work and fire it up. Like It was really intense living in Aomori at the time. There were no trains going from Aomori to Tokyo. Place I lived in Hirosaki, which is probably the one of the best places to be in Aomori. I think it's a, a very small city, but it's very beautiful. The castle was probably one of my favorite castle grounds. I really liked going for walks and riding my bike around there, so it was really nice. It's, it's a very beautiful area, but like I said, it was very isolating, and I feel like it's good for like if you're retired or something. When I got there, um, I wanted to reach out to the jets, the other jet teachers. The jet program was very, very clicky. There weren't a lot of very nice people from where I was living. I was not. I was kind of like considered an outsider. I wanted to study a lot so I would stay at home, I wouldn't go to the clubs, I wouldn't go to the bars all the time. I would sometimes, but it was very very rare because I wanted to like study, I wanted to do my own thing, I wanted to study Japanese, so I would stay at home a lot and study. A lot of the Jets would talk behind my back and be like, okay, she like doesn't hang out with anybody. She wants to study Japanese and she wants to, you know, start a YouTube channel and stuff like that. I was just told that I was like too much of an introvert so I was never invited to things and like all that stuff and yeah to be honest like I was kind of like an introvert introvert but I kind of wanted to work on my own my blog I had a blog at the time I wanted to do my own stuff 
and people weren't really appreciating it. So if I didn't go to the club or something, they'd be like, oh, well, of course she's not gonna go to the club because you know she doesn't wanna hang out with anybody. And that wasn't really the case. My neighbors were absolutely awful to me and like, that killed my experience a little bit. I'm probably not gonna go into too much detail, but they weren't very nice, like, at all. And I kind of expected that because they talked a lot about other people behind their backs when I first met them. They were always saying so much crap about other Jets in the program. Even people that they would hang out with regularly, they would talk about in a nasty way. My neighbors, like, honestly, they didn't like Japan. They talked about Japanese people like they were a piece of crap and like they complained about everything and it's just like if you if you don't genuinely like Japan, don't move here. <laughs> so there's a lot of negativity going on. There's a lot of clickiness. There's a lot of like immaturity and like that kind of killed the experience for me. I did have a lot of close friends in Aomori. Like I hung out with people. I met some Japanese friends and we would hang out. So I did have like my own group of friends um, that I loved hanging out with and genuinely loved talking to. So it wasn't like I was friendless completely. Um, going to a Japanese office every single day. Like I said, I worked in a BOE and I was given like zero tasks. I asked them like, what should I do? They're like, oh, we'll create lesson plans. And I'm like, create lesson plans for what? And they're like, oh, we'll just think of some ideas just in case you go to a school next week or something and it's just like you can't make a lesson plan without knowing what the what they're teaching or what they're learning. I asked if I could study Japanese and they said no. It sucked to learn Japanese especially in Aomori because they speak in such a different dialect. It's not the dialect that we learn. It's like learning a whole new language. <laughs> in Aomori. Not even like Japanese people from Tokyo or like Kyoto, they don't even understand this region's dialect. It's called Sugaruben and it was it was intense. It was a very different sounding language. So the studying thing I couldn't do, which was stupid. They used Internet Explorer most of the time. Like who uses Internet Explorer? I was literally like going insane, sitting at a desk eight hours a day, not going to classes, not learning, not teaching. I had no experiences. It was really, really depressing. And I was getting to that point where I would just like go home and cry because I had no, no work. I had, it sounds great in hindsight. Like it's just like, wow, you have a job, but you're not actually working and you're getting paid. That's awesome. It's great that you get paid to do absolutely nothing, but it can drive you freaking mad if you have nothing to do. I prefer to stay busy. I prefer to do a job and get paid. When you have a dream and you want to go to Japan and you want to teach, like specifically, like they put the girl that studied education in zero schools. <laughs> what a waste. It's like such a waste of my time. My future is more important. They're not giving me the job that I was told that I was going to be doing, that I was hired to do. Honestly, when you don't get what your contract says, then that is a huge reason for you to quit. So I decided to quit. Check your contract because it does say that you can quit 30 days in advance. Most contracts say that. There's some contracts that say you have to pay your plane ticket back. Uh, luckily, my contract didn't say that. It was just like you have to give a 30 day notice. Other thing that they told me before, before I decided to quit, they told me our BOE is getting rid of ALTs. We don't want an ALT anymore. We don't want to pay you anymore. So you're going to have to move somewhere else in Aomori. And you're not going to know until a week before. So you can't decide where you're moving. So I was like, what the fuck? This was like a dream turned nightmare. I needed to figure out what I was gonna do. So I contacted somebody that I had met in Nagoya during my internship years. I did an internship in Japan like a couple years prior and I asked if he had a position at his job and he's like, I don't, I'm not looking for anybody right now. I'm not looking for a teacher right now, but I will help you find a job. So he found a couple positions for me and one of them being an international school, which ended up being like one of the worst jobs I got out of that <laughs> too. And that's like another story time video. Right now I'm working at a really amazing company. I've been working, it's a teaching, it's a school that I've been working with for like three years. He got me this job, this international school job, but I had to fly to Nagoya to get the interview. And I was like, crap, I have to fly to Nagoya. I have no days off left. What am I gonna do? Cause I took some vacation time already and I was like, crap. I ended up just going anyway. <laughs> 
So I ended up flying to Nagoya on one of my weekends. It was the busiest time of my life. I didn't want them to find out that I was looking for another job, but this was dependent on my future. I flew to Nagoya in a snowstorm too. It was like during the winter. It was like the worst time ever. I thought I was gonna die. Did the interview, got the job that day, which was pretty awesome. When I came back, I took my, I was terrified, but I took my supervisor out for coffee and I was like, I quit. It was the hardest thing I ever to do, but it was the best decision of my life and they were not happy about it. They were really, really bitter about it. But you know what? When you don't give me a job, then you're gonna suffer the consequences. That's so unfair to my time and my life. I asked him, I was like, what's my schedule the next three months? And he's like, oh, you have no schools for the next three months, June, July, August no schools um i ended up leaving um the jet program a month or two later and i remember packing up all my stuff was really sucky like but shipping my stuff from aomori to nagoya was easy um that was like the start of a really bad relationship that i was in if you guys want to know more about my story um, I have it, I think it was like called the mini documentary of my life in on this channel. You guys can watch that. Make sure you read your contracts before you sign anything. Obviously, I wanted to try out going to Japan in the JET program because it was my dream, but I wasn't doing the thing that I was hired to do. Please share this video with anybody that's interested in going to uh, Japan or uh, interested in applying to teach in the JET program. Um, yeah. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I just wanted to say that this was just a very rare experience. There's a lot of people that had really good experiences in the debt program, so don't be afraid to apply. It's a good program to get your foot in the door, like I said before. So don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.